Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie and I'm so happy to have you here. If you are like me and when I was just starting out in photography especially, I really loved those blurry backgrounds, the creamy backgrounds in photos and I struggled for a while it, when I was first starting out on how to achieve that look. So in this video, I'm going to share a few tips on how you can achieve that look in your photos. Number one, let's start with what is bokeh, bokeh. I feel like everybody says it kind of differently, so let's discuss first quickly what that even is. The googled definition of this is the aesthetic quality of the blur produced in out of focus parts of the images. Well, isn't that helpful? So basically what we're saying is that blurry, creamy background part of the image. I am personally a sucker for a nice blurry background in my images, so that is probably why I am in love with the 85 millimeter lens. I think it just gives that like beautiful compression, beautiful background, crisp, sharp like in focus subject and it's just so nice and blurry in the background it's one of my favorite lenses but that's another conversation for another time i think most photographers if i'm going to be generalizing here especially when you're first starting out want to achieve that blurry background look in their photos do you have to have a really blurry background to be a good photographer no you do not <laughs> you do not have to have like this creamy blurry background to be a good photographer because number one everyone's style of photography is different i have shot with a another photographer who does not achieve that look in her photos and that's totally fine because that's her style and secondly there's more to photography than just having blurry backgrounds in your photos there's lighting there's composition there's emotion there's so much more that goes into photography than just oh the backgrounds blurry it's beautiful the image is perfect no that's not going to make or break your images necessarily because there's a lot more that goes into it so do you have to have blurry backgrounds to be a good photographer? No, but for me and my personal style, that's what I like. I love a good blurry background. That's the kind of style that I want to achieve in my photography, so that's what I do. I'm going to share a few tips on how to achieve this bokeh, bokeh look in your photos. The first thing is your f-stop matters. If you are not shooting in manual mode on your camera, you need to. You need to start in manual mode. You can control all the settings that are necessary to create the kind of image you are looking for. If you are starting out and you don't know how to shoot in manual mode, I do have a video here on my channel going through the different settings, what they mean, um, in very, very simple terms, because that's how my brain works. <laughs> my brain needs simple terms for things. So if you're interested, I will link that video down below for you to check out. I think it's really, really helpful, but either way, you need to be in manual mode on your camera. A good rule of thumb is the lower the f-stop, the less in focus. The higher the f-stop, the more is in focus. Was that grammatically correct? I'm not too sure. So why is f-stop important? Why is this important? Because if you're shooting with a higher f-stop, you're not going to have as much of that blur in the background. Why? Because more of the background's going to be in focus in the image. It's not going to be blurry, it's going to be in focus because your f-stop's higher, if that makes sense. So let's, for example, take a picture of a couple, right? I am going to set my f-stop as low as possible. Usually that's like 1.4, 1.8. Some lenses even go down to a 1.2, but I'm going to make this as low as possible because I'm not worried that the couple's not gonna be in focus because it's two people. That's going to give me the blurry background that I'm looking for. So my couple, the subject, my subject is the couple. They're going to be in focus. 
the background is not going to be in focus. So when you're shooting at a low f-stop, the focal point is of, you know, of the focus is going to be smaller. So I say this because a lower f-stop may not be necessary or may not be practical in every situation. So for example, families, if it's a large family or, you know, sometimes it's not practical to have a 1.4, 1.8 f-stop when you're photographing a family because not everyone's going to be in focus. And that's the most important thing is that your subject is still staying in focus. However, if you're wanting that blurry background, you do need to make sure your f-stop is as low as possible. There's other things that go into it other than this, which we're gonna get into, but definitely try and play with your f-stop and make it as low as possible. I only increase it as needed so i'm primarily a wedding photographer if i have a wedding party i will increase it but i say just enough where every person is in focus the background will still be a slightly blurry but when we're talking like individual portraits couples portraits you want that as low as possible because your subject will be in focus and the background will not be. So you will have that really, really blurry background I think you're looking for. Another thing to consider to get this look in your photo is how far away you are from your subject. So the distance your camera is from your couple or your model or your family, whoever you are photographing, whatever the subject is, how far away you are matters. So that means physically getting close, like I shoot on prime lenses so they do not zoom, so I have to get physically close to my subject or my couples. I'm going to show you a couple examples of when I was further away from my couple versus when I'm closer. So in this photo, um, this is an engagement session that I did, beautiful engagement session in Charlotte, North Carolina um, at Freedom Park. Oh my gosh, I love... I loved this engagement session. These two are beautiful. Um, so you see, this is me far away. <laughs> this is me far away from my subject. And you can tell more of the bridge is in focus because I'm gonna show you when I get a little bit closer, but more of the background is in focus. So the ground is a bit more in focus. The bridge is a bit more in focus. Parts of the, you know, the layers of the trees some of those are in focus. So let me show you the picture when I take a few steps closer. You can see how much blurrier everything is. So you can see the ground is completely blurry. Um, the different layers of the trees, blurrier. The bridge is blurrier. So I wanna put them side by side. Yes, there's more that you can see in the further away image, but you can tell, I think especially in the trees, the dimension that's there, um, more of it's in focus the further away you are because more, more of the background is on a similar plane as the subject versus when I get really close to the subject, you can see some of the leaves of the trees are still in focus because they're on a similar plane as the subject, but all of that depth and dimension is there and it's all blurry. So this was shot with the same lens. So it's the same exact lens. All I did was take a few steps towards the couple and I achieved this look. So yes, my f-stop was as low as possible as well, but if you're wanting this look, how close you are to your subject does matter. So let's look at another example, another engagement session here. This one was taken at Dorothea Dix Park here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And again, you can see the ground is more in focus because you know, you're getting everything that's in the plane of your subject in focus. And um, yes, behind them is still blurry. Like I'm still getting this, I'm still achieving this blurry background look because of my f-stop is low um, and some other things, but you can tell 
how when I get closer I mean look at the ground when you get closer it's blurrier you know because your camera is focusing primarily on the subject only and it's not getting that the ground it's not getting the trees it's not getting some of those other things that are in the photo which again the photo on the left is great and it's still achieving that blurry background look that you know we are going for here but when you do get closer the background becomes blurrier so definitely playing with that and keeping that in mind as well just knowing that the further away the more in focus some of these things will be versus the closer you get but i'm happy with both of these images both of the images of this engagement session even though i'm further away i'm i'm still happy with how they look because my f-stop's low and then some other things to consider that we'll get into in a minute but there's something special to me when you get that close-up shot and it's just so nice and blurry behind them. Of course, again, these were all taken on the same lens. If I'm using my 85, the compression is there and it just looks different, so I'll make sure to insert an example of, you know, a full body photo, you know, that's taken further away with the 85. It does achieve a different look that I'm in love with and that's why I'm in love with the 85 lens, <laughs> but, for engagement sessions like this, I primarily shoot on a 50 millimeter lens and it achieves still that creamy background look that I just absolutely love. So something else to consider when you want to get that creamy background is what you're placing your subject in front of, what you're placing your couple in front of. Um, or your model or whatever will determine you know what you're seeing what you're the background you're placing your subject in front of will matter when you're trying to achieve this look I like to say dimension matters layers like ogres when we were talking about the engagement session with the tree some of it's still in focus but then it like kind of blurs out and then there's something in the background like the bridge in the background just adds that like different dimensions to the photo and it really achieves the look i'm going for it's nice and blurry versus and i want to show you an example engagement session this was at the north carolina art museum for um my friend and i mean they're married now but when we did their engagement sessions. This is a fun fact, this was during a hurricane and you never would have known it. But anyway, so we have this photo where I intentionally put them on this wall. I think it looks really cool, kind of artistic. I really liked it, but you can see it doesn't matter how close I get. So I took a few steps closer to them and the background is not blurry. It's not that bokeh like, dimensional blurry background and my f-stop was still as low as possible it's because I put them in front of a solid wall so this works as well for like tree trunks if you're putting somebody directly in front of a tree trunk you're not going to achieve that look it's just not gonna happen so I want to show you what happens when we did turn a bit and this is what I mean you just turn um, so now the wall is on the left-hand side of him. You can see now we're achieving that blurry background here because there's dimension. You see it in the wall is now blurry as it goes back. You see the trees and the ground is blurrier. The subject here is in focus sharp. Putting your subject, the background in which you're putting your subject will determine, you know, this kind of look that you're going for. It will determine the blurriness of it. So there's no dimension in the first examples I set because honestly, they're not far enough away from the background. So you can still achieve this look on a solid background, but in order to have more of that creamier background, bring them towards you, away from the background. You can tell with some of the other examples that I showed, they're not right next to the bridge. They're not right next to the trees. The trees are significantly like behind them. And I'm gonna give you one more example. This is from a wedding. This was actually for a friend of mine um, on their wedding day. 
You can see the distance I have them from the trees behind them. We are not right up against the trees. Um, and then you can see in this next photo next to it, this is what happens when I got closer, right? So again, still blurry in the background because we are not right up against these trees here. But when I take a couple steps closer, they're standing in the exact same space. You can see this, the ground is blurrier, the trees are blurrier, and that's what is achieving this blurry bokeh, bokeh, however you want to call it, look. And lastly, I wanted to show you again dimension and what you place your subjects in front of matters, right? So we have more of a solid background here, I would say, with the house. And you can see the dimension with the tree is in focus here. Yeah, the ground is more in focus, like the actual road they're walking on. But I'm still achieving that blurry look because look how far away I am from the house. If we were on the porch here, the house would be in focus. If we were on the lawn here, the house would be more in focus. But because we are significantly far away from this house, look how blurry and creamy it looks behind it. And of course, like the trees and the lights here behind all contribute to it. But you can see there's also dimensions and layers here. Like I mentioned before, this tree's in focus in the corner, and then the tree on the left-hand side is kind of behind the house, adding that dimension as well. But it's achieving the look that I want. Those are all of the tips that I have to achieve that creamy background look. Of course, there's so much more to photography for anything, but I do hope you found these tips helpful. The best way to achieve the look you're going for is to practice. I'm a firm believer in practicing. So grab your camera and just start practicing. I would say see for yourself what happens when you put your subject really close to the background versus further away. When you're further away versus closer to your subject, really play with these tips and see for yourself because then you're going to decide what your style is, you're gonna make it your own, and you're gonna achieve the look that you want. But I hope you found these tips simple and helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.